Welcome. Today we are going to review the uh, feature highlight videos, episodes one through thirteen, and we're gonna. I'm gonna kind of give my thoughts uh, on new features and things I might find that I notice. Uh, but overall, we're just gonna kind of watch the videos and go through them. Here's the first episode. The roads crisscross Road the tools. city are more than a means of transport. By connecting citizens to their work, family, and communities, they are the veins and arteries of your city's beating heart. All right, so here you're seeing an intersection, actually a couple intersections, and the way they're laid out normally would be a mess in City of Skylines 1, but in 2, they're much cleaner, and they make sense, and, and I like that each lane is highlighted. That's a good feature. I definitely like that. Every pathway you carve out shapes the routine every day and opens the door to the extraordinary events that define their lives. City building starts with roads. Roads allow people, goods, and services to move through your city, of course. And in City Skylines 2, all roads except for highways automatically carries water, electricity, and sewage lines. It's a Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot thank them enough for putting <laughs> all the plumbing underneath the roads. That is going to save me so much time. If it saves you time, comment, let me know. It's a shortcut that lets you focus on what you love about city building sooner. You'll construct and refine your road network using road tools. They're easy to learn and flexible, inviting you to follow your creative impulses. Returning players will welcome upgrades to the road tools that introduce several of the most wished for features. Other features are totally new. Use the road tools to create seamless city blocks in just three clicks. In All right, that is an impressive road tool, the grid tool. I'm not sure how much I'll personally use it. Let me know if you'll use it. I like to kind of draw my grids by hand. I'm OCD like that. Um, I have grid areas, but I also do residential cul-de-sacs and stuff like that when, I, when I'm building out um, single development homes. Um, and with the new roundabout features, I can kind of make cul-de-sacs, so I'm looking forward to that. We'll lay long, beautiful stretches of road to link lively residential and industrial districts to your buzzing city center. Just like that, you'll thread traffic along wide, curving streets and elegant, elevated highways. You'll even add bridges and tunnels in only a few clicks. Intersections have been overhauled in city skylines too. Placement rules are less restrictive, and you can use pre-made intersections on new and existing roads. You can also add roundabouts. Yep, they're here. From gentle suburban roundabouts. All right, roundabouts, very nice. Um, what I understand there are four. You get one by default, and then you, you use the development points that we'll see later to buy more the, the rest of the roundabouts or you can spend the points on them but that is cool i love prefabricated roundabouts it means i don't have to mess with drawing them by hand uh, but you can still draw them by hand if you if you want if you don't if the ones that are there don't quite suit your need to roaring multi-lane roundabouts it's never been easier to engineer uninterrupted streams of traffic that's because roads will be configured automatically, so vehicles can enter and exit the roundabout safely. Simply drop your preferred roundabout over an existing intersection, and ta-da! A whole new way to move people, goods, and services through your city. Decide the I don't think they have it. I'd really like to see it modded in, maybe. Uh, but being able to put stuff in the middle of the roundabouts. Uh, I know a lot of content creators have mentioned that, and I'm going to mention it, too because um, it's something we want so if you want to be able to do that comment let me know direction of traffic and how it flows by placing traffic lights crosswalks and directional no turn traffic signs and stop signs erect sound barriers and construct parking lots that's another new feature. thank you for parking lots there was always downloaded assets you could use but having an in-game option awesome that's all I gotta say it's just pure awesome. Feature in City Skyline 2. And for returning players, 
Christmas, Christmas has come early. You can even add decorative touches if you want to. They don't just make your city pretty, they can be useful too. So those trees you use to line sidewalks? Add charm and reduce noise pollution. Of course, building a city is a process of es Now you can manually add trees into medians and grass sidewalk curbs and stuff like that. So you can choose what kind of tree you want to put in there. Um, trees now, if you place them, they start as saplings and they grow over time. So just be aware of that. Exploration and experimentation. You'll try stuff out. Some of it you'll like and some you won't. Want to change an existing road? Use the new replace tool. It's like the old upgrade tool, but with more freedom to refine your road network. Take All right, that is such a crisp split I absolutely love it that means I can make finer angles for my exits and I can finally have exit lanes which is very nice I like that change your mind about a road pull those tools to the rescue click 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 and that road is a thing of the past road building is more intuitive and nuanced in city skylines too and Every pathway has a far-reaching impact. Build your city's roads as a testament to your ambition and a promise to citizens that anything is possible. All right, we're here in Feature Highlight Episode 2, Traffic AI. People are the lifeblood of your city. As they move through it, they set the city's pulse. Not in the cold rhythms of code. And so I love the randomness of the in the buildings uh, the lights being on or off and the uh, the signage around the building it just it really shows you depth and I absolutely love it but with the variability and pace of a real city so you should expect the same order and chaos that emerges when countless individual decisions are made all at once it's a level of vibrant realism you've never seen before. And it's powered by the deep simulation of traffic AI. How people move from A to B in your city is called pathfinding. Previously, pathfinding meant choosing the shortest route by distance, but ignoring factors like travel time and traffic congestion was less than ideal. Pathfinding has changed. In City Skylines 2, Four main factors influence how people move through your city. All right, so yeah, they're going to explain the four pathfinding ways. I'm just going to say before they do that, absolutely love this. I feel like this is what was missing from City Skylines 1. This is why nobody ever knew where they were going or how they were going. Uh, you would put a bus line in and nobody would use it, or everybody and their mother would try to use it. Uh, but it would go to a place where they didn't need to go and then they would have to get on another transit. It just, this is going to solve so many problems. These factors are called pathfinding costs. People weigh up these costs to decide where to go and how to get there. The path with the lowest cost is the path they choose. But how people weigh up these costs is very different. To help you understand, Let's walk through the four pathfinding costs. Time is usually the most important pathfinding cost. Everyone will pick their quickest route to their destination if they can. Comfort is another pathfinding cost. Who doesn't want a smooth journey? Wouldn't you avoid tricky intersections if you could? The availability, convenience, and cost of parking will now impact where people choose to go and how to get there. Easy parking is actually the deciding factor for some people when choosing where to socialize and spend their money. So you saw there, uh, you could change the fee for each parking lot. That's crucial because if you want to have a particular parking lot as free or really low cost, maybe in a low, uh, low rent area or something like that, you can do that. And then if you want to have an expensive parking lot next to a game field, um, where people are going to tourist to, you can do that as well. Absolutely love that. And you will need parking if people want to drive somewhere. So if you don't have parking, they're going to be looking for mass transit. That's a 
another fact-finding cost, money. Fuel, parking, and public transport tickets can seriously add up. So it's a factor in where people choose to go and how they get there. The final factor influencing pathfinding is behavior, or how likely people are to engage in risky maneuvers on the road. U-turns, lane hopping, and speeding can All right, so you saw that. That's crazy. The AI made the choice to make an illegal U-turn between those two poles where the gaps are in the barrier, and it, it, it performed an illegal U-turn. That's crazy. That That's realism right there. Can reduce travel times, lower fuel consumption, and avoid some of the inconvenient aspects of travel. To keep pathfinding costs low... So I have noticed um, they will... Rules don't apply to the emergency vehicles. So they will break traffic laws. They will ride up on curbs, ride up on sidewalks. They will get to their emergency however they have to, which I think is really cool. People will reroute if something happens on their journey. For example, if they get caught behind a traffic accident that takes too long to clear, they'll find another way to get where they're going. Hang on. Traffic accidents? Right so... Drivers can lose control and crash their vehicles into traffic and buildings. Yikes. You see, things like wet roads, extreme weather events, and the time of day can increase the risk of a collision. But it's actually poor road conditions that should keep you awake at night. Want to reduce the risk of serious mishaps? Send your road maintenance crew out ASAP. Traffic AI has improved pathfinding so much that you can now grow a larger population. But remember, a big population brings opportunities and challenges. Two info views can help you plan and react when life takes a left turn. Traffic info view takes the guesswork out of traffic management. It delivers a real time overview of how much traffic is on your road network and traffic so you can resolve problems quickly. Deep simulation transforms the movement of people, goods, and services through your city into the pulsing reality of a living, breathing city. But how people choose their path? That is always a response to the world around them. A world of your creation. All right, episode three, public and cargo transportation. Let's dig in. Transport networks set the rhythm of life in your city. As they move people and cargo, they can create harmony and discord. This finely tuned orchestra of ships, vehicles, planes, and trains is yours to conduct. To create a thriving metropolis, maintain a steady beat to keep your city in motion. You build a city from scratch in city skylines too. No public transport, no tracks, no runways. Creating these and other transportation networks is a crucial first step. After that, improving and integrating them paves the way for expansion. When you establish your city, citizens can take the bus or a taxi to get where they're going. These. All right, so in the beginning of the game, your earliest um, public transport is going to be buses and taxis. It's going to be the first thing you unlock. And then you'll be able to investor development points into the more advanced forms of transportation. These are the first transport options you'll unlock. They're reliable, cheap, and easy to route here, there, and everywhere. Traffic conditions are their Achilles heel. It's no big deal in a new metropolis, but it is for a growing city. That's when you'll level up your public transport. Think trains, trams, and subways. Each one has pros and cons. All right, now what's not on the initial feature list, which I'm really going to miss, is monorails. I don't know, it, maybe it's the, the futuristicness of them, uh, but I really loved using monorails. I, lo I loved using them um, for point-to-point -point transportation, sending people from one end of a line to the other, for the most part. Um, like a Kind of like a modern metro, you know, just it goes down and then it comes back. Um, I think they could use monorails with maybe more trains and higher capacity will be more efficient, but I really hope it comes in an expansion. If you're missing monorails, let me know in the comments. They're all 
all expensive to build and complicated, requiring depots, tracks, and stops where passengers can buy tickets and get on and off. That means they can't offer the far-reaching service of a bus line or the door-to-door -door service of a taxi. On the other hand, they're more efficient, not least because they carry more people and cargo and reduce road congestion. Let's start with subways. They're fast, high capacity, and they take up very little room when they're underground. If they operate above ground, you can run them on elevated tracks so they don't get tangled up with road traffic. Trams. They're more flexible than trains, so you can more easily add lines to service new and expanded neighborhoods. Build tram tracks on existing roads or run them on dedicated tracks if that's the best way to keep the hustle and bustle dialed up. Trains carry loads of people too, and not just suburbanites. They can bring visitors from outside your city in large numbers. Trains play another critical role as cargo transport. Build a cargo train terminal, and you build a hub where businesses can receive, ship, and store incoming and outgoing goods. Water transportation is another option for passenger travel and moving cargo. It's another high capacity network, though water transport's real potential lies in imports and exports. You see, cargo ships might be slower than trains, but these bad boys can carry 1,000 tons of stuff to and from your city. Yeah, that's right. You can trade with other cities. All right, so to clarify what they mean by that is your city will in general, anything that it doesn't consume, it will export it. So you'll make money off of things that you're producing but not needing. Uh, and then you'll import things that you're not producing that you need, um, which we'll, you'll see more of that in a, in a later video. But I did also want to point out uh, the changes to the, I guess, the cargo um, pathing. So in City Skylines 1, you had um, basically the main cargo path, and you had to be pretty much line of sight visible to be able to build a harbor. Um, now you can manually add your own extensions to the main line so that you can put your cargo harbors in places where they, you couldn't in City Skylines 1. And uh, that is really exciting to me. If you're looking forward to that, comment, let me know. So you'll need somewhere to house all the goods and resources coming and going. Easy. Like cargo train terminals, cargo harbors double as cargo storage facilities. Like all of the other networks, air transportation has drawbacks. Planes carry fewer passengers and less cargo than ships and trains. Airports are also astronomically expensive and have the footprint of a small town. However, air transport has a pretty irresistible advantage. Speed. Plus, planes won't add to road congestion, they don't follow a rigid track, and they make outside connections incredibly easy. The transport mix in your city will become complex and intricate. Use the transportation overview to review passenger and cargo transportation networks separately. Filter again by transport type to see high-level details about individual lines and toggle them on or off. Use the transportation info view to understand the impact of your networks. Plan and manage transportation networks carefully to find the right tempo for the movement of people and cargo. Conduct it perfectly, and every citizen, trader, and tourist will march your city toward greatness. All right, on to episode four, the zones and signature buildings video. Let's get to it. Every decision you make weaves a thread into the fabric of your city. But don't for a second imagine a smooth, seamless surface. Cities don't work like that. Instead, it's an urban patchwork marked by the realities of life and living. You'll create and stitch it together with zoning. Zoning lets you decide where people live and work. You create these residential, commercial, and industrial zones with zoning tools. They work in a couple of different ways. Click and drag over cells on the map to zone large rectangular areas. Zone all adjacent cells with one click. Or get granular, zoning a neighborhood cell by cell. Establish a city. So here's the maps. Um, I'm really hoping they put out more maps with further expansions. They probably will. Um, but 
I, I'm having a hard time deciding which map to start on. Um, if you got a map that you know you're going to start on, leave a comment, let me know. Uh, that might help influence my decision. I don't know. You choose a map. The map's theme dictates if your city's buildings will have a North American or European architectural style. You can now use zoning tools to mix it up. Go on, sprinkle a little North American flair into your European city, or vice versa. Okay, you know how zoning tools work, but what can you zone? Well, let's start with residential zones. The places and spaces where citizens relax with friends, raise families, and rest their heads night after night. So what I saw there uh, was solar panels on houses. What I really hope that means is there are still the uh, like smart housing policy. I really love that policy. And I really hope that's still in the game. I hope that's what that means. Again, there's a lot of new residential types. They'll, they'll explain them here, but I'm really looking forward to the mixed use right here with the commercial on the bottom and then residential up top. That's just... Oh, it absolutely needed in today's environment. There are now six residential zone types. Two will be familiar. Low density housing, detached houses for single families, and high density housing, tall towers packed with residents. New zoning types include medium density row housing and medium density apartment buildings. There's low rent housing now too. Huge apartment buildings with tiny apartments. Finally, there's mixed housing. Here, residents live in apartments above ground floor shops. Mixed housing adds next level realism because homes and shops rub elbows like most real world city centers. Ready to talk business? You'll create dedicated commercial zones where companies sell the locally produced and imported goods people need and want. Your commercial zones are also where citizens and tourists eat out, catch the latest blockbuster, and dance until dawn. You'll establish industrial zones with factories, workshops, and warehouses where businesses can store goods ready for distribution or export. You'll also develop office zones. Here you'll find small, low-density buildings with only a few business. I do love that they've split offices into low and high density. I mean, there's definitely a need for the split, so I'm so glad to see it in operation. You'll also get the glittering high-density towers that define your city's silhouette in the sky. Growing your city and zoning go hand in hand. Here's an example. You zone residential areas that boost the population, and with it, the demand for jobs. You respond by creating an industrial zone with factory... Okay, so that's incredible. I really like that new feature for the industries, uh, for like farming you can manually draw out where you want your farm that's just i love that no more you know cookie cutter rectangular farm plots you can custom fit it to wherever you want to put it i absolutely love that factories where people get to work now these factories produce goods but they won't stay in business long without somewhere to sell them you solve that problem by expanding commercial zones. You see, each zone helps create the momentum you need to realize the city of your dreams. And it wouldn't be the city of your dreams without signature buildings. These are unique residential, commercial, industrial, and office buildings that you unlock as your city expands. They're free to build, and you can plop them anywhere. Plop. It's City Skyline Studio. Go on, say it. What's so special about signature buildings? Well, they function like any zoned building. A home for people, a warehouse for industry. So yeah, the signature buildings are going to be more prevalent to you, I think, in City Skylines 2, which I absolutely love. Because I'll be honest, I don't think I ever put a whole lot of them down in City Skylines 1. Because they, they're, what they did just sucking money. It's all they did. Now, um, the signature buildings provide provide things in an area of effect around the building. So it'll provide, you know, increased happiness or uh, increased 
uh, industrial storage capacity, stuff like that. You know, just something related to what it is. It provides a boost to your city, which absolutely love it. An office for workers, but they can elevate the neighborhood in unique ways. Signature buildings can also bring citywide benefits. Zone and place your signature buildings carefully so each city district flourishes and plays its part in the success of the whole city. Life's rich tapestry has never been richer than in City Skylines 2. All right, thank you for joining me today. We're going to continue uh, with our next video. We'll have episodes 5, 6, 7, and 8. We'll see you then.